Welcome to Price Vault. My name is Mike, and today we're going to do a quick research study recap over a new study on an ingredient that I'm really excited about for some new applications. And I'm talking about NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide, which is an NAD booster meant to, well, generally meant and generally taken for anti aging and longevity reasons. And there's a lot of theoretical stuff, a lot of animal models, and now we're getting a lot more human based research as well. But some of the effects are some of the stuff that we are here at Price Ball may be more interested in in the sports nutrition world. So uh, over the course of time, researchers have realized that as animals, humans, all kinds of different organisms age, our NAD levels deteriorate, decline and deteriorate. And as that happens, NAD is a nucleotide that is able to help us regenerate uh, our DNA, to rebuild our DNA, and it is used for mitochondrial energy and cellular energy, cellular health. More NAD generally means more health span uh, and more lifespan, especially in the, in, in the animal models. Um, and less NAD often means lower energy and lower lifespan. So we've seen, um, and so this naturally leads us to, to wonder, can we just supplement NAD? And the answer is basically no, because it is not, to, it is not orally bioavailable. And as a supplement like in a capsule, it would just simply, uh, it's not stable, it would erode. So that leads us into further questions such as, can we take the precursor of this, uh, of this com uh, compound and then have our bodies generate more of it itself? Because we've seen more NAD brings a ton of different benefits along the anti-aging spectrum and along the insulin sensitivity spectrum, getting our muscles to accept more carbohydrates, which is where we're going to go with this. So uh, the answer is yes. So nicotinamide riboside and R was a formerly uh, one of the the first darlings in this industry. Some people are also getting NAD uh, injections, which. I, I don't think we're not going to cover that in the supplement industry. I don't think it's very it's proven. I, I, I've heard some painful stories as well. And, um, and so th th that took the research down the NR rabbit hole. And things were kind of like half, kind of iffy. There were some studies that showed some success and some that didn't. It just didn't seem to be working as well as it theoretically would. However, new research has shown that we have a faster and better and more bioavailable way of getting NAD levels improved. And that's outside of diet and exercise, which we'll get into. Trust me, but right now we're just gonna talk about the supplement and we're gonna talk about NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide. And so with NMN, it seems that it seems like animals, at least the, the rodents, have a gene, a transporter specific to this because it gets into the cells and it boosts NAD levels within like five minutes of ingestion. So something is happening very quick where there doesn't seem to be a lot of like a long chain of effects. So we have a very long article talking about NMN and some of the awesome purposes that it may have in the anti-aging and longevity space and the cellular health, um, trying to look and feel younger because we our, our, our NAD levels will naturally deteriorate and that prevents our ability to regenerate. So we have a lot of different uh, mechanisms and stuff discovered uh, on our NMN blog post and we talk about that. And the blog post is sponsored by NMB Nutrition who has Bio NMN, one of the uh, more bioavailable and lab tested NMN supplements. So you can read a little bit more about that on our bio NMN post as well. And so we do have that business relationship disclosed right there. But this study has nothing to do with, well, it has nothing to do with NMB nutrition, although it used the ingredient that they are currently selling in bio NMN. So what the researchers did is that they took 25 insulin resistant overweight women and split them into two groups. This was out of the, uh, the University of Washington. You know, I want to get that right. It's either Washington. It's, it was actually out of the Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis. So a major university. And they took 25 women, insulin resistant, pre-diabetic women who were overweight and gave them either placebo or twice daily, 250 milligrams of NMN. And so that's 500 milligrams a day. 13 women were in the in the, the NMN group. 12 women were in the control group. Then what they did is before and after the study, they, they did this for 10 weeks, before and after the study, they then put them on a, uh, an insulin a clamp. I'm gonna get the exact term here because I think it's important. It's kind of interesting too, the way that they, and it's the gold standard for testing glucose disposal. So it's a hyperinsulinemic, Euglycemic clamp. And what they do is that they they hook you up to a control loop and they have a blood sugar and insulin monitor monitoring your levels and they get you um, hooked into, a, have an IV, 
putting both glucose and insulin into your system and they get you a stable baseline. And they get you to, so let's say, uh, 125 on your blood sugar levels. And then what they do is they keep a constant drip of insulin to keep you at 125. And as you pump insulin into the body, it's gonna make your blood sugar levels go down. And so as the blood sugar levels go down, they measure how much more glucose do they have to add to your, um, to your other drip? How much more glucose do they have to put in your veins to keep your blood sugar at 125 now that we've got the insulin levels stabilized? And the amount of glucose that you can suck in and drive into your muscles here, that is basically like the score of how good you are at glucose disposal. If you're extremely insulin resistant and extremely diabetic uh, to the point where your body becomes resistant and you become resistant to accepting any more sugar into your cells. And that is like you, so you would not be able to, you would not be draining much blood glucose out of your blood and into your muscles. If you're more insulin sensitive, you are able to get more blood glucose out of your blood and into the muscles. And you're able to accept more blood glucose, more glucose into the IV drip. And so they compared before and after the study. And we'll show some graphics here. Uh, so what we have here is we have the placebo group and what we have is the basal insulin with the white bars compared to what happens after the insulin infusion on the gray bars. So after you give someone insulin, they of course can suck in more glucose. However, now let's look at the NMN group on the right side of this whole chart. So we have you know, the baseline levels before we started giving them any NMN supplements. And that looks the same as placebo, of course. They're all the same starting point. But then what we have are two wildly different bars with some very, very interesting hyper responder, uh, two individuals who responded very well. After the NMN supplementation, they were able to drive a lot more glucose, significant amount, 20% on average with some, with some, a couple hyper responders or one hyper responder, I'd say one very strong responder. They were able to drive more blood glucose into their muscle cells, becoming way better at glucose disposal and, um, and getting it out of their bloodstream. Now, this is important for two reasons. In the sports nutrition world, we're excited because <laughs> to us, that means more carbohydrates, especially post-workout. And so we use these as glucose disposal agents, which is a class of dietary supplements that we use to basically do that. We train hard, and then we wanna drive as much of our carbohydrate into muscle tissue and to reload glycogen so that we're less sore and so that we look fuller and are stronger and bigger and less of it into our fat cells because obviously we want to build muscle, not fat. Now, alternatively though, for the general population, this is also important because we want to clear the body of both glucose and insulin. So over the course of time, as you become insulin resistant, you're going to, your body is going to need to use more and more insulin to get the blood sugar out of to get the sugar out of your blood. And eventually, it's unable to do that. Your body becomes resistant. It says, no more. My uh, sugar saturation is what we can call it. And it's not always sugar saturation, but that's, that's a, a phrase I like to use for insulin-resistant individuals. Once you have too much blood sugar, and, or too much sugar in your blood, it becomes toxic. But even worse, in my opinion, is once you have too much insulin, your body, your pancreas is putting out insulin saying, get this blood sugar out of here, get this out of here, get out of the house, or you become hyperinsulinemic. That's where the real, real wreckage begins. And your body's doing the right thing. It's trying to get this blood sugar out. And the way it knows how to do that is by telling your pancreas, pump out more insulin, get that sugar out of my blood. It's not going anywhere. You've become resistant. You've become metabolically broken. And it seems that NMN can undo some of that damage. I'm not saying it's gonna be a miracle drug or anything, but I am saying that this might be a nice little glucose disposal agent ingredient, which is what we're excited about. Now, I talked about diet and exercise, and I always, always, always will emphasize getting sunshine, getting fresh air, and eating a low insulin diet, unless you're training for a bodybuilding competition and really know what you're doing, Stay away from foods that are going to chronically spike your insulin levels. And that means staying away from refined carbohydrates, only use as many carbohydrates as you need to get your swole on, and then staying away from the toxic industrial sludge waste oils, the polyunsaturated fatty acids, the vegetable oils, the seed oils, better known as the seed oils because they're not really from vegetables. Soybean oil seems to be the worst one. Anything high in linoleic acid, the sunflower oil, the uh, canola oil, it depends on the canola oil. Corn oil is horrific. That stuff drives insulin resistance to the point where it almost doesn't matter about your carbohydrate status. A lot of people talk about carbs, carbs, carbs when it comes to diabetes and insulin resistance. They're not talking enough about the seed oils. 
So get that stuff out of your diet. But I have news for you, stuff's everywhere. It's in every processed food, basically. And you're gonna be cooking a lot on your own. Get back to using saturated fat and butter, and um, I use beef tallow a lot. And then stay away from the linoleic acids. Stay away from the omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acids. We know omega-3, good. Omega-6, bad. Almost, like, almost always. So, and the, the, the caveat is, of course, for the bodybuilders who are looking to get inflamed, because these are inflammatory agents. Um, Post-workout, I'm not against a little bit of the fun oils, but that's for the lean individuals. If you're insulin resistant, you got to stay away from the refined carbs, and you definitely got to stay away from the industrial waste oils, the vegetable oils. So, I always want to disclaim that because this is just a dietary supplement ingredient, and it looks like with these women, they were able to have far better, not far better, but pretty good, much better, 20% on average better glucose disposal rate with NMN. Now, a lot of people taking this say, oh, I have this ingredient that's going to increase NAD. It's going to increase cellular energy. I'm going to burn more fat. I'm going to burn more energy. Not so fast. In this study, they didn't burn extra fat. There was no noticeable weight loss. It doesn't, uh, it's not one of these magical ingredients. It seems to be very good at letting your body create more NAD and getting more cellular energy and making your system more insulin sensitive. In, insulin sensitive. And to me, that's incredibly, incredibly important. But it's not just going to melt calories away for you or whatever you want to phrase it as. That's not how this works. But I am very excited to see another ingredient that we could add to our arsenal of glucose disposal agents because... We like to have our carbs post-workout. I love getting the carbs surrounding the workout, and sometimes we use ingredients such as um, berberine. The dihydroberberine glucovanage from NAB Nutrition is insane. There's a new product from Unbound here, run by the same folks at Nutribio, and this stuff is awesome. However, we might have a new one to the arsenal, so I'm very excited. You can check out blog.price.com where we uh, cite the sources and show some of the uh, show some of the graphs. We'll have popped them up on the screen and everything. But overall, NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide, looks to be like a new ingredient that's great for boosting NAD levels and might have some really good anti-aging and longevity benefits. We don't know that because we can't do like 10-year-long studies on this stuff. But I can tell you that with overweight, diet, pre-diabetic, insulin-resistant women, we were able to get them to absorb a lot more glucose. And that means that they could either take more carbs. I don't want them to do that. I want these women to get the glucose out of their bloodstream, get their insulin levels low so that they can finally begin burning fat out of the liver and then, and then finally begin burning fat out of their fat cells. It takes time, folks. You got to clear out, but you're not going to burn anything. Many studies have shown this. You ain't going to burn fat if your blood sugar is too high and your insulin levels are too high. You're a sugar burner, not a fat burner. So if we can use any tools to make this process go a little bit quicker, all for it. In the meantime, we're just trying to maintain health. 88% of Americans are metabolically broken. And I can cite the study up there on the, on the wall here, but pretty much well, so many of us, the real, the real epidemic is this obesity epidemic and this insulin resistance that's leading into diabetes that's leading into type 3 diabetes, which a lot of people, which is the name a lot of people are starting to use for Alzheimer's disease. We need to clear out our blood sugar and any way that we can do that to then be able to clear out our insulin levels, which I think is the real problem. I get very excited about. So, BioNMN, by NMB Nutrition. Let's see it in a glucose disposal agent ingredient. I know that there's probably bigger applications out there and people could sell it as an anti-aging longevity supplement on Amazon. I can't wait to see more research. More human-based research is coming out. But for now, we have seen that it has some awesome effects with glucose disposal. So hopefully we can take advantage of that. Blog.pricebot.com slash supplement dash research slash NMN is where we wrote about it. And we have a very long article. And then we also link to the, uh, the new article here on these 25 women. Thank you very much. And thanks to the researchers who are putting this stuff together because I think we are pushing the boundaries and we're realizing what we need to do to get back to metabolic health and to then to get back to immune health. And I'm telling you right now, folks, it's the soybean oil and all the other omega-6 fat, polyunsaturated fatty acids. It might be time for me to make a few more videos on that stuff. So anyway, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel and check out those blog posts and uh, where we have the slices sorted. See ya. Welcome to Price Plow.